What I hear you saying that for a public relations person to be effective is that they have to know more than just the discipline of public relations. They really have to have a broad knowledge about the company or the organization that they work for. Is that fair? No, that's very fair. I, I, I think that's, uh, that's been something that I've talked about for a long time because I think it's critical to the success of our whole industry. We want to be taken seriously. We want to be uh, considered uh, as, as part of top management of, of companies and of counselors in, in our case uh, uh, who rep might represent these companies. So we have to know the companies as well as, as they know themselves. When uh, selecting people for your organization, Golan Harris, what characteristics do you look for in the individuals? What qualities or talents or abilities do you believe that someone ought to have in order to qualify for a job, either at a senior level or an entry level job? Well, I think that uh, I, I've, I've always felt strongly that uh, individuals should be well rounded. It's great to be, you know, to have the, the skills in writing and communicating and uh, oral skills and things of that nature. But I, and that's very important. I think those are givens. But I looked for people who are more rounded in, in everything they do, whether it's sports or the arts or economics. Uh, and I know it's, it's, it's a, big, uh, <laughs> a big order, but, and you can't always have everything like that. But I try to encourage our people to become well-rounded. Uh, no one impresses me if they try to tell me that they're workaholics. <laughs> because I, I think if be, being a workaholic is one thing, and I work as hard as, as anybody. And, but, but I do think that I like to take time to, to be rounded and be interested in, in the theater or in sports or in, uh, in business in general. And uh, because I don't think we're going to be able to continue to counsel our clients if we're not really able to communicate with them on all these levels. I'll give you an example, a funny thing. I had dinner not that long ago with the head of a major advertising agency. And, and I was telling him about a movie I had seen the night before. And he was boasting to me that he hadn't seen a movie in 20 years. And I kept thinking, why is he bragging about that? <laughs> Here's a guy who's supposed to be able to communicate on what's current and what's going on today and uh, have the pulse of what, what's happening. And he was sort of boasting to me that he has, hasn't seen, this, seen any kind of a movie in 20 years. I figured, well, I'm sure he hasn't watched any, uh, any uh, television or heard any videos or seen any, you know, any, any plays or anything of that nature or read any books even if, if you want to go to that extreme. He was just talked about how hard he works and he had no time for anything else. Well, you've uh, also, you've already said that you're not impressed by someone who says they're a uh, workaholic. What other turnoffs are there for you that when if somebody says something or their behavior is such that they either you reject them or they get in your doghouse or you say sayonara or <laughs> what? what? What I mean, if the you know if the being well rounded is a good thing, what's the opposite of that? The opposite of being well rounded, <laughs> well, maybe too interested in uh, too interested in uh, maybe an organization they might belong to, and they might devote all of their waking hours to that organization. And I'm not saying that it may not be worthwhile. It may be a, you know a terrific thing to do. But I've seen people who get so wound up in, outs in, in an outside activity of some sort or another that they, don't, that they neglect what they're here to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So there's that balance, that delicate balance that uh, you're always looking for. You don't want anybody to be a workaholic, but by the same token, they still have to understand that you know, we're here to, uh, to do our daily, daily jobs. And when they're neglected and they spend more time on their outside activities, those are the things that might turn me off. Do uh, uh, people coming out of uh, college programs, I assume you hire uh, recent college graduates or j journalism graduates or whatever, uh, is there uh, is, uh, an education that you look for 
uh, is, a is being educated in public relations or mass communications uh, equate to a liberal arts background, or how does that all, in your judgment? Well, I, I like to have, uh, <laughs> you know, I think that having, you know, the academic skills are important, but I like to have somebody who knows something about sales, even. Mm -hmm. Now, this may sound a little far yeah, afield, but, but, but I think that selling is not a dirty word. I think that uh, some of the top people uh, in our business are pretty good salesmen, too. They have to not only sell the clients that we're involved in, that this is a good idea and they should pursue this, but uh, sell people who work for them. And it, it's a constant selling job. I think that some uh, companies, major companies, have hired CEOs who've had no experience at all in sales. They might, have, might be chief financial officers or they might be in manufacturing uh, part of the business, and I think that's fine. But I think that they have to have some sales background, knowing what makes their customers tick, and what and what their employ and what makes their employees tick as well. Because I think that uh, the selling concept it permeates uh, all areas of uh, of a person's job. So when I see uh, I, I've seen certain CEOs of major companies fail because they came out of the other ranks, and they and when I say sales, these are people who have never who are feel uncomfortable talking to media people or to their own employees and they're so introverted that they may not be able to communicate properly. I mentioned Ralph Larson of Johnson & Johnson. I, I go back to Johnson & Johnson not because they're a client, which they're not, but because I think they're one of the, the quintessential good guys and they always have been in, in terms of their ratings and things. And he always said that he spent 75% of his time communicating internally and externally and selling, if you will, whether it's security analysts on, on the quality of the stock, the value of the stock, or the, or the people who work for him. Because he felt that that was such a big part of his job description. But I think too many boards of directors forget about that when they're looking for CEOs. In, in our world, uh, you've mentioned sales as being important, which I think, uh, and the ability to sell. Where does creativity fit into your uh, thinking as far as a characteristic or quality of people you hire? I think creativity is an extremely important uh, element of our business, and uh, it always will be. No matter how the media may change over the years, I think being creative is still uh, still gets the juices flowing. And uh, one of the things I always enjoy doing at the office is getting involved in brainstorm meetings, if we're, whether it's an existing client or a new client prospect that we're working on. I always like to get involved in that process because uh, the creative part of it is, is still one of the things that uh, got me interested in being in this business. 